Hey guys, how you doing? This is Adam with TAT Express. No, you haven't missed it. Uh, sorry, I was running a little bit behind. Uh, I'm still showing just to be uh, 2 o'clock now. So uh, welcome, guys. How you guys doing today? We're going to be talking about buying a used truck. I get a calls all week on, on, on this matter. So guys, this is something that uh, I want to check out and go over with you guys. Uh, there's there's quite a few things that we see coming to our shop whenever uh, we have viewers ask uh, when they, they want to buy a new truck. Um, let me see. Let me make sure I'm all hooked up here, guys. So basically, when you want to buy an, a used truck, it's very tough because, uh, to be honest with you, you don't have too many uh, you don't have too many people that you can trust when it comes to uh, when it comes to hey Trey, hey Trey, how you doing? Uh, let me go ahead and write back to Trey. Trey's out in Virginia this weekend, so hello, Trey. Hope everything is well out there in Virginia. Back to uh, buying a used truck. So we see a few guys come in uh, wanting to buy uh, a used truck, and uh, you know there's there's quite a few good deals out there. So uh, I, I know that it's very tempting. And what I was going to get to is you got to be careful about uh, buying a used truck from uh, uh, any any kind of salesman, anybody that doesn't have anybody uh or any kind of experience hey what's up robert how you doing um nice thanks for joining us guys thanks for joining us we're, we're waiting for more to jump on right now uh so thanks for uh thanks for all the support guys uh appreciate you guys is all your support all your calls so what what i see and what and notice when when guys bring trucks in that are buying uh buying used trucks uh, it, it, you know, there, there are some good deals out there. There's a lot of trucks out here. And what I was going to get to is uh, the salesman that you're dealing with. Uh, you got to be very cautious when dealing with them. Uh, a lot of a lot of their or most of all their their um, their commission is based off of selling you this truck. So when you're trying to buy a truck from a dealership, you got to be careful. Uh, one item uh, I did tag uh, or I did paste a video that we just did about DOT inspections. Uh, that was released a few weeks ago. Check that video out. Uh, familiarize yourself on what you're looking for in your equipment when you're the only one out there and you don't have anybody else to look at it. Another item uh, I always mention is if you want to look for maintenance histories, it's very important to look for maintenance history uh, uh, on your truck. Uh, Robert, yeah, we got some questions coming in as well. Uh, le let's go ahead and see what Robert has. He says, I got a new question for you, a new problem. Passed through your shop yesterday. But it was closed. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. We are closed on Saturdays. Uh, but shout out me, man. Let me know. What is it? What is it you're dealing with? Uh, in the meanwhile, I'm going to keep going on about uh, used trucks. So uh, getting a truck checked out is very important just because, uh, as I mentioned, you can't trust the, you can't trust the, uh, the dealers that much. You know, they're going to be uh, telling you, hey, you know what? This truck is ready to go. And I've lost count how many times we've had trucks actually come through here that other shops or dealers have said that it was really good to go. Um, and for example, I had a had a customer come in, and I'm not going to share his name, but I'm glad he came by. He was able to. Uh, 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 we were able to help save him some money. You know, he brought in a truck. It had an ISX Cummins in it, very low mileage. It was a good buy. He was uh, a shout out from uh, New, New Mexico. Hey guys, how you doing out there? Hopefully it's not too hot. Today is very hot over here in Dallas, so we're up in the hundreds today. It's pretty hot. So uh, he brought the truck in for us to check out. Back to this ISX Cummins. It was a nice truck. I believe it was around 400,000 miles, just right at 400,000. And if you watch a lot of my videos, uh, that's around where you're going to get a lot of your maintenance. A lot of the maintenance is due, especially on the after treatment system. And now I'm seeing uh, some of these newer trucks are having the intervals actually be even shorter. They're, they're actually including cleaning out your after treatment system components as well, like EGR differential pressure sensors, as I mentioned before, intake pressure sensors. Those are all items that are going to get built up with soot and they can cause the engine to run incorrectly, cause extra soot. And then, as I mentioned, you're going to have issues with the after treatment system. So he brings this truck in, uh, you know, very, very, uh, he, he was ready to, ready to go to work, very uh, ready, uh, you know, he was just ready. So anyway, we, I look over the truck. Uh, we, we, every, anytime we, that anything comes into my shop, we do a, a digital inspection where we're going to email it to you, message it, message it to you. You can check out our courtesy check video. Uh, that's, that's exactly what we do on all the trucks when you come in. So uh, once, once we've looked over the truck, I've, uh, you know, he, he was just kind of reporting some items to me just from when he was driving. He wasn't able to get maintenance history. 
Uh, but when we were inspecting the truck, I noticed a lot of gear train noise. Uh, now, on the ISX Cummins, the gears are in the front of the engine. So if you hear a lot of racket and you hear a lot of, you know, it doesn't sound smooth. Something that has 400,000 miles should still sound kind of, it should still sound smooth. I mean, everyone, uh, you know, diesel engines are loud, but they shouldn't sound like they're about to come, up, come apart. They shouldn't hear any kind of high ticking noise, any kind of noise like that. You want to be cautious of whenever you're running the truck. So we hooked up the computer also as well. So I advise them on the gear train. And also I want, I advise them on the coolant bottle. Um, you guys, I brought this up in some of my videos where you want to check that coolant bottle, uh, to see if you got any kind of discoloration. You want to make sure to see that, that the coolant is, uh, the color, whatever color you have, if, whether it's green or it's red, you want to make sure you're able to, to see that color real clearly and not uh, look like it's muddy water or it's mixed with anything. Anytime the coolant's ever mixed with anything, especially at a low mileage, uh, you know, you want to be very cautious when buying that truck. Uh, you know, there's so much to choose from right now. I would, I would just probably just step away from anything that would cause you any problems right now. Uh, repairs on, on these trucks aren't cheap. So especially with after treatment problems. And that's another thing I wanted to talk about, uh, about repairs. You know, I see a lot, I see a lot out here. Um, let me catch up to some of the questions here. I got some questions, guys. If you got anything, if you've had, just bought a truck, you need us to check it out, or if you if you got anything you want to share uh, with with everybody, let me catch up the chat here. Uh, Robert Robert says I got a new question. Okay, yeah, I'm still waiting on that question, Robert. Let me see if here it is. Question is, I changed my kingpins. Mecha mechanic did not calibrate ABS sensor. Truck ran first, second gear, and third gear. It lost power. Changed batteries didn't fix the problem okay so is your abs still is your abs still there is a problem with your abs still there um is it an automatic um because if it is an automatic maybe the, your abs is going to be affecting that i'm just trying to link the repair with it with uh with if if this is actually your problem since you said uh abs sensor uh the triangle came on which means the truck doesn't have traction so they recalibrated the ABS sensor and it worked, but lost some more power. It's been a struggle with the stupid truck. Oh, well, you know, it can be like that, especially if you're dealing some, with someone that uh, that maybe not be too familiar. You know, I don't know the whole story. What I would suggest is if you can give me a, a readout of the code, uh, you can send it to my email here. You can send it at info at tatexpressinc.com. And what I can do is look into that more for you and get you an answer. You know, if it's in line with your ABS fault and if you're dealing with the automatic, um, it's a newer truck, it's possible that, yeah, that ABS, that ABS could be causing or the source of your problem. So make sure to email us. As you can see, guys, we got chat working now. Look at this. It's really nice. Look at all this chat we got. Uh, beautiful. I'm glad it's working. Thanks to Trey. Uh, as you guys know, Trey is our marketing director, so he's, he's hard at work, able to get able to get this going. I'm glad. Um, so, Robert, I'm going to jump back around. Email me. Uh, yeah, there you go. Go ahead and email me that code. Let me look at that, and uh, hopefully I can get you an answer. I'm going to hit this button real quick, make sure it doesn't shut off on us. Okay, what's up from North Carolina? Hey, how you doing, Mr. Johnson? Hope everything is uh, well over there. I know everybody's dealing with this heat and this pandemic, so... I'll, I can it can be a mess guys i wanted to go over repairs as well um you know we talk a lot about you know used trucks i get a lot of questions about used trucks and 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 i'm glad that robert uh had his question about uh about his abs or about his repair guys i see a lot of repairs coming in here from other shops that either didn't troubleshoot it correctly or didn't take the time to troubleshoot it correctly and, you know, we sh I share a lot of information on this channel so you guys, to help you guys, you know, troubleshoot it. If you are in the field and you're working on these trucks, make sure you're looking over the procedures and following the procedures and understanding the procedures so you know how these systems work. Drivers, the only thing I can suggest to you is that you follow a solid maintenance schedule. I had a question from a, a, a viewer uh, asking me, hey, what is the maintenance for my truck? And it got me thinking, you know, I want to start building some more uh, some more content for you guys so that you know what type of maintenance maintenance schedule you need to be sticking with really what i would suggest to you do if you're out there buying a used truck you don't know the maintenance schedule for your truck find out what kind of engine you have look it up on google look at the manufacturer the manufacturer is going to be able to give you the intervals see if those intervals are going to match the maintenance history and that's what i mean about finding maintenance history if you're buying a used truck as i mentioned these guys are trying to sell you what they can you know they want to get this these trucks off their lot 
So if you take these trucks with you, then you know, it's not their problem anymore. If you are having problems, give us a shout. You know, I'm gonna, we can help you out. We can help you find a problem. Uh, guys, I know sometimes it's tough to find a good shop. Um, but, you know, if you got any questions, reach out to us. I wish I could have a, um, you know, a reference in every, every city for you guys. We're working to do multiple locations here in the future. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to reach out to you guys out in the east and west coast. So hopefully that helps. Uh, hello from Phoenix, Arizona. What's the temperature out there? I know it gets pretty hot. It's hot in Texas here. So as you can see, I'm sweating a little bit. Uh, we've got a little bit of issues going on with our, our AC. But uh, it won't be too much longer, guys. You know, if you could, like you can see behind me, this is, our, this is the new location here. It's coming up. I want to do a share screen with you guys here shortly about uh, how construction is coming along. TJ, thanks for all the support, guys. Thanks for everybody, all the watchers that are out there that has been following us and has been seeing, you know, our growth in, 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 as the time goes. Let's get on with these questions. Check in from Texarkana on my way to Fort Worth, bringing those lotions for you guys all the way from Toronto. Wow, thanks. Uh, he's bringing a load all the way from Toronto. He's bringing lotion all the way from Toronto. I, I know that's a long trip. Uh, hopefully your truck's running well. I would like to know your fuel mileage. Guys, that's a good way to to find to keep on top of what the truck how your truck is performing is checking your fuel mileage trying to keep your fuel mileage going well uh if you see your fuel mileage starting to drop that's an indication that you have something going on uh you know you want to get that checked out uh i'm gonna send guys i've already put my email here i'm gonna put my email here again if you need if you got any questions about intervals on your truck send us an email uh with your engines engine uh engine model and i can get you some intervals over to help you follow a good solid maintenance schedule because a lot even with these after treatment systems say with the def systems you're gonna want to stay with a good solid maintenance schedule with these def systems to avoid any downtime because they're real pick real picky systems i had a customer come in thanks for coming in uh guys he came in, uh, I, 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 he had service at another location. They didn't see the leak he was having. He actually had a leak coming out of his uh, out of his DEF uh, uh, filter. And they, I, I believe they had him change the one box, which is ridiculous. You know, how are you gonna change the one box and have this filter? You know, and, and I know it's not the driver's fault. He, he's trusting the dealers. He's trusting the guys that, that are, are expected to know what's going on. Guys, you gotta be very cautious, you know, when you're dealing with some shops. Uh, you want to you want them you want to be thorough on why they're why they're changing these components have they tested the components especially with nox sensors i see it all the time i see uh, nox sensors being changed all the, all the time just because of fault you know there are some internal issues that can go on with a sensor that you cannot do you can't you can't change it or you, or you can't uh, fix it that needs to be replaced but if you're having you know low nox conversion that's not that may not have a lot of times that may not have nothing to do with your your nox sensors so testing those before you condemn them is i always suggest testing a component before you condemn them because can just condemning a component a component just because the 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 name of the components in in the code doesn't mean that that component is bad you want to really read a description and understand what's going on so I appreciate that. Uh, trucking is truck. Uh, cash is king. Trucking. Are you familiar with Pittsburgh Power or their product called Dorothy? It's an add-on before the exhaust goes through the EGR, and it's supposed to remove soot. No, I'm not familiar with it. I, I do see that there's some. There are a lot more third-party uh, people coming out uh, trying to help cut down soot. Um, just be precautious on 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 stuff that you're adding. I had some a customer or a viewer ask about uh, add, uh, additives in the fuel. You know, Cummins did uh, come out with an additive. Uh, they were approving an additive, and basically that's the only one that I've seen that's been approved. Uh, you want to be careful with these type of injectors, especially the smart injectors on the high-pressure systems because the tolerance on the, on the tip of the injectors are very, very small. They're like microns. So if you, if you use any kind of additive that's supposed to break up, uh, any kind of buildup in the fuel, you could break some stuff loose and get them caught into the injector. So I've seen it with stuff like Hot Shot. I've seen that where it's supposed to uh, clean up an injector, but it just pretty much just kills the injector. So I, I would just suggest that you, you're fueling in good areas. Another thing is keeping up with fuel, your fuel, uh, fuel filter intervals. You know, when I bring up schedule, bring, keep following a good maintenance schedule, uh, your fuel filters is one thing. You know, I've seen a video that just got released by a YouTuber 
uh, and I don't want to say his name, but yeah, you know, his, the video comes up about a fuel pump being, that needs to be replaced. And I'm pretty surprised that these type of things got past him. You know, I, I watched the video just because, of course, I'm a YouTuber now. Didn't think I would be a YouTuber, but I mean, I'm welcome. Welcome at all. Um, thanks for all the support, guys. So anyway, I'm watching this video and, and this is another thing you can look for whenever you're looking for a used truck is you're looking for indications of when this filter has been replaced last okay so the youtuber was mentioning that the fuel pump needed to be replaced and it's a pretty expensive fuel pump it's isx 15 so anytime as i mentioned when you condemn up when you condemn a part you want to make sure you can make it to fail you don't you want to make you want to do tests to make sure it's bad because replacing a fuel pump is expensive so you when you're doing your test you at least you have more uh, confirmation that that the that the part is bad, and you want to be able to explain to the customer, hey, why am I replacing this part? It's not because the code came up. So, the it's an ISX 15. It was idling and it would shut off. And he was saying that the customer's complaint was that the that the that the uh, that the truck would shut off after after sitting there for a while, and it only would happen at idle. It would happen more on uh, when it's cold, but on the road, it's running fine. So when you think about that, you think about a fuel pump that's bad. Uh, when you think about a fuel pump that's bad, that's just that's just uh, you want to make sure that it that it's it's not you know it, that it is bad. Per, for, you know just because we know that they have a bad uh, uh, history of failing, you want to still uh, make sure that that pump is is the reason why it failed. So back to the video. Looking at the video, I can see the video, and I'm looking at the fuel filter, and it hasn't been replaced since like May of 2019. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe this video was recorded a while back. So, I mean, this is a fuel filter that's already over a year old. And I'm like, uh, you know, let me give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe this is recorded back in the day. So maybe it was recorded back in 2019. So, but no, there's mileage on the filter as well. So the mileage on the filter is like, over just way over i think i want to say twenty thousand miles something like that because later he shows the odometer and you can see the odometer and i was just very just shocked just honestly just shocked that that somebody would request that much work on a, with fuel filters that are being so simple to replace guys so when you want to keep up with a maintenance schedule um you know one thing is fuel filters is very important so uh, that that something I I just wanted to share with you guys. So I uh, appreciate that Robert. Thanks for for your question You know, I want to help you out with that if it does have something to do with your ABS as I mentioned email me your question uh, Okay, uh, Jarek Jarek's got a question. I got a question. Can you can you do or let me see? I, I got a question Can you regen and it's not call for it? Okay, you can do a regen Now do you want to do a regen? Why are you wanting to do a regen? You're probably uh, doing some excessive idling is that why you want to do the region to kind of do kind of uh, a sort of precaution um, that, you know and that's fine but if you do too many regions and you can get the filter hot uh, you can basically just you know end the filter a little bit shorten the filter's life more than more than uh, than you than you need I'm going to release a video on how to do it on a d13 Volvo uh, when we get a region light that's come in we run the region we look at the back pressure we look at the soot, the soot percentage. Uh, these are all things we like to take into calculation. And when it comes to service intervals, this is something that we, we recommend here in our shop. Uh, anything over 300, 400,000 miles, we're gonna be cleaning a lot of the after treatment components uh, coming from the EGR side all the way down to the to the uh, to the after treatment system. So this is a lot of a uh, lot of good important uh, maintenance uh, maintenance that you need to stay on top of to keep you from going down. Uh, if you have if you have a truck that's around 250 to 300 thousand miles uh, and you haven't had a, a cleaning on your filter, this is something that needs to get done. Don't skip that. If you have uh, a truck that's over 500,000 miles and you haven't had your valves adjusted, that's something that needs to get done. Uh, you know, after treatment systems include the DEF systems as well. DEF systems are needing to get service around 100. I've seen them getting need to get service around 100 to 150,000. Now, this is this is replacing the actual filter in the DEF. Uh, ex you know, doing a whole kind of an inspection on the outside of your system. This is very important. Guys, I, I see you got, we got about 30 guys watching right now. Uh, please like the video. Uh, if you're watching, I uh, appreciate your support. Uh, as you can see behind me, I got the, uh, this is the, the new land that we got uh, for the new construction. It's been going on for a long time. Uh, the planning process is least. Uh, we've had, you know, this has started since back in July. So we're very excited about that. 
uh, TEB Trucking. He's looking for the cost of a DD15 fuel pump. Um, go ahead and email me your information. I'd like to get inquiries uh, sent to me on an email so that I can get your VIN number and then just I can give you a good estimate. Uh, also, why are you wanting to replace the fuel pump? Uh, While well, you having issues, when's the last time you've had a uh, fuel filter service? Um, what kind of problems are you having check engine lights? Uh, you're having hard starts in the morning. What's what's the reason why you want to replace that? I appreciate that. Andrew, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. Uh, next question here. I deliver a truck around the country for a drive away company. OK, uh, most trucks going to the dealership have problem, especially after treatment. Most have fault lights are doing OK. So th this viewer is saying he's got he drives for a delivery company he's, and he's taking the trucks to the dealership for after treatment problems. Most of the time, that's what it is, especially on delivery trucks that aren't getting a lot of highway usage. They're getting a lot of idle time. They're getting a lot of city driving. They're not able to get driven long enough to get that heat in that filter up to break that soot that's building up in that filter and breaking it loose. And, you know, usually when you're doing a rolling regen or, or, or a or active regen, you're driving down a highway for about 30, 45 minutes. And that's that's basically an active regen. Your, your, your filter is getting clean while you're driving. So uh, keep that in mind. If you if you can do if you can avoid any long idles, let's not do any long idles, guys. Uh, that's very important. That idling is not good for the after treatment system. And also with the fleets, if they're pushing their PMs too long, I got questions about uh, uh, customers that our viewers that are working for fleets or are with fleets that are running the fifty thousand mile, uh, thirty thousand miles. You know. This is this when when the de when the dealers and, and I go back to my comment at the beginning of the of this video when it when you're when you're checking for intervals schedule schedule maintenance intervals some of these are going to tell you to go 30,000 miles uh 40,000 miles check the fine print guys it's going to tell you on the fine print that hey only if you're using these approved oils these approved filters not without a a oil analysis program in place so don't just read the text and say hey you know what i'm going to go 50,000 miles because that's what it said i'm going to use blah blah filters i'm going to use this type of oil and i'm going to do 50,000 miles and expect you're going to hit a million miles they they're in that fine print they're telling you hey use these type of oils use these type of 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 inform, uh use this type of um i'm sorry use these type of oils use these type of filters if you are going 50,000 miles use an oil analysis program the reason why they're saying use a, an oil analysis program is because they want you to see what's going on with that oil. If you're pushing that about 30,000 or 50,000 miles and you're using conventional oil, regular fuel filters, or oil filters, you know, there's there's a possibility you can have uh, oil starvation going on. You can have some metal starting to come off those bearings. You can have some metal coming off from the from the rocker box housing if you're in a DD15. So keeping a keeping a good keeping a uh, keeping a good uh, maintenance schedule as I mentioned is, is very important. So uh, thanks for that. Thanks for that comment. Uh, all right, I appreciate the email, Robert. I'll get to you once we get off this live. I'll get back to you on that. Hopefully, I can help you with that. Um, Jason, hey buddy, love the videos from North Carolina. I appreciate that, Jason. We're gonna be getting more content to you guys. Uh, as you can see, we got the new construction started, so we're very excited about that. So that's one item that's been keeping our time. And also, as I mentioned in my other videos, during a weekday, you know, we're work, we work hard on figuring out these problems that come in the shop. A lot of the problems you guys um, are mentioning over the phone uh, or over the chat, you know, I, uh, I, I enjoy I them. Enjoy um, uh, we see them very often. That's why we're able. I'm able to, you know, kind of recollect real easy and kind of give you an answer for those. You know, as I mentioned in this video, we wanted to talk a lot about, or we wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about buying used trucks, but the questions, man, keep them coming, chat. I really appreciate all the activity and all the all the questions that are coming in. Uh, hey, you're a little late, but hey, you're fine. It's fine. If you got any questions, I see your question coming up. Let me get Cash is King first uh i'm on a dallas load from chicago okay to dallas currently in arkansas getting 9.3 miles to the gallon 26 tax cat lady evolution pulling a refrigerated trailer wow a cash is king i appreciate your input that's really good fuel mileage what is your uh weight on that what's your weight on that shoot me down your weight i'd like to know your weight if you're refrigerated i'm pretty sure that's heavy man and you're chicago to dallas you know, honestly, cash is king. I used to own trucks uh, when I, you know, I've been in this industry for a long time. I've had my shop for a long time since uh, I want to say back in old, I, I don't even, I want to say 08, 07, 08. 
Uh, probably about a year after opening, I started getting into trucking. I own trucks. Chicago to Dallas is a very good run. You know, you don't have to deal with the weather as much during the cold season. And, and it's just really a nice run. A lot of people, you know, they don't really like going into Chicago. But, you know, staying in the middle of the states like that, you know, it's, it's a good run. It's a good seasonal run. Especially if you got if you got some if you if you're dealing refrigerated that's really good. Let me know your uh, let me know your weight. Cassius King is saying he's getting nine point three gallons on a twenty sixteen Cascadia Evolution, so which I'm pretty sure is a DD fifteen. That's really good fuel mileage, man. That's really good. Ten almost ten miles to the gallon. Also, let me know how fast you're driving. Are you using cruise control or what's going on? How are you getting such good fuel mileage? That's wonderful. Okay, Colin Transportation 2014 Cascadia 125 with 104 miles. Okay, sorry, 504 miles. What shall I look for? Paid 29K. Okay, so uh, he he says he bought a 2014 Cascadia with uh, 504,000 miles. He paid 30,000 for it. Uh, you know, at the beginning of this video, I, I added in the comments section. Uh, let me add it in the comments section. I'm going to add... A, a video that I shot about how to do inspections. I just put it in the comment section. So this is a DOT inspection. Get familiar with this. I know this is a lot of work. I know that's a lot of, uh, uh, of stuff to to look over, but it's your equipment. It's your it's your money. If you're gonna be looking over your truck, look over that. Five hundred thousand miles. You're gonna make sure if you if you didn't get any maintenance records, make sure they had the DPF filter clean. Make sure uh, at 150,000 miles that they had uh, that the DEF filter has been serviced. It's been cleaned or replaced, uh, tested. Make sure it's good. Make sure your EGR cooler is not clogged up. Make sure your intake pressure sensor is not clogged up. EGR differential pressure sensor, differential pressure sensor on your DPF filter. Check all those items, okay? If your filter hasn't been removed and cleaned, that's something that's going to need to get done, okay? If it hasn't been done, that's definitely need to get done. Uh, vow adjustments as well at 500k so that's another item that needs to get done as well so guys i appreciate you watching uh if you haven't liked the button or hit that like button share the video if you guys have a buddy that has a truck that this information could help them uh so i appreciate the questions let's keep them coming let's keep on going chat what do we got everybody hit the like button transport damn it didn't get the notification it's all right man here we are i'm still here you know usually i go live for about an hour or so I'm going to see how long I can last today. Let me get a, a drink of water real quick. Hold on. So, guys, I mean, construction, I've been sharing some media. I've been sharing some pictures, guys. We're going to – we did some drone shots. Uh, I, be, I just barely started getting the drone footage in. It looks very – it looks really nice. I'm really surprised how fast they're moving. And I'm really excited about moving around in that location. It's a, it's a lot of – I think a lot of you guys are going to be delivering in that area. There's a lot of warehouses in that area, so I'm pretty sure – you guys are going to be coming around that area already. So let's move right along. Cash is king. Did you let us know your weight, Cash? Let us know your weight, man, and what and how fast you're driving. Yes, I uh, uh, got a, a comment here. He says he appreciates the info. Yes, sir. Uh, this is this is what we do. If you guys got questions, I'm sorry it's taking me some time to get back to you guys, but I'm trying to get on more of a fixed schedule so that I can get back to you guys' comments. You know, as you saw, we got construction going. So let's keep on going. The spin the wheel light is on uh, or on my good old Freightliner Detroit. If the wheel's spinning, is it is it spinning? Uh, it's usually telling you you have some slippage. Is it really slipping? Uh, if it is slipping, uh, check your check your suspension. Check your uh, to see if that if that tire is actually spinning, if it shows any marks that it's been spinning. Then that's something that needs to be looked at if it's not spinning it's possibly just going to be a sensor uh check that out it uh, could be just a fault in the sensor if it if your wheel is actually not spinning and you're actually getting a notification of spinning so i appreciate that question get real uh if you got any questions if you want to follow up with me make sure to email us i did leave my email i'm going to put my email here in the comment section uh, I'm not going to put it on chat, but I'm going to put it here in the comment section as well. I've already put my email on the chat, guys. If you don't have my email, there it is. There's uh, another thing I'd like to mention when you're coming into our shop. You know, the, when we troubleshoot a code, man, it's not falling all on one technician. 
of course, I'm looking at it. Uh, we have other my other technicians are looking at it. We, we look at the history of what we've seen with these codes, making sure that we're covering everything before we go back and say, hey, you know what? This is a problem uh, because I hear it a lot. I have hear transmissions being replaced for no reason. I hear fuel pumps being replaced for no reason. I mean, as I mentioned, there's a YouTuber that was, re re you know, a recent YouTuber that just was asking or referring that you replace or suggesting you replace a fuel pump on, on some filters that were over a year old. That's just nuts. And, and, and so just keep that in mind, guys. If I'm sorry that if I'm not able to service all you guys, if you, but if I can help you by sending me a question, I'll be more than happy to, to get to you. Um, you know, I know sometimes we're, we get kind of tied up, but please leave us a, uh, you can call us, you can leave us a message. I'll get back to you. We, we try to capture all your messages. I got a voicemail. So I'm, I'm trying to capture all your guys' information, all your guys' uh, questions and get back to you in a timely manner. So I uh, appreciate that. Robert, I need to go to your shop. I need to get this truck fixed. Hey, man, come on, man. We got guys all over the country that come see us. We got guys from Chicago. We got guys from PA. We got guys from California, man. They come from all over the country to see us. And, and it's, it's understandable because I hear the stories of what was done. I've had a customer or a viewer call me, and, and this is real. This is real, okay? This is another thing that I saw here, okay? So this guy said he's got coolant buildup, coolant pressure building up in his system. And right away when I hear pressure building up in the system, I'm asking, hey, did, he, did they – do a combustion a combustion test if uh or combustion gases test they didn't do a combustion gases test this guy already rebuilt the whole engine and he still has he still has pressure building up in the system i hope he makes it he says he's going to come by next week i hope he makes it i'm sorry that you're having to go through that such a headache but i, I know we're going to be able to find that problem guys so I know it's tough to, uh, to to take in what all the mechanics are telling you, so shoot us some information. With nowadays, you can reach us on Facebook. You can reach us all over. We're working to get back to you as fast as possible. So if you can make it to the shop, that's preferable. You know, there's a hotel right next door. Uh, we can take care of you guys. We got free ride service. Uh, so if you, got any, if you got any questions, you can call us during business hours, 972-225-3017. Or you can uh, you can hear you can email us you can hit us up here on Facebook or I'm sorry on YouTube sorry guys I'm just all over all platforms so I'm gonna put my phone number here too so let's move right along here lots of used T60s coming on the market could you speak about MX engines things to look for tips to keep a peak okay the same thing has I appreciate this question um, and 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 the same goes for all the platform where we're dealing with Cummins or if we're dealing with Packar. You want to make check out the maintenance history. If you're buying it from a dealer and they don't have maintenance history, more than likely there was not maintenance done on that truck. Look at the mileage. If the mileage is around where a lot of the stuff is being called out for this maintenance, make sure it's getting done. If it's not getting done, that might not be a good buy. You might have some issues with that truck. Also, have the truck checked out not only by an outside shop, but by an experienced outside shop. And the reason why I say experience because I had a viewer come in just this past week and I'm glad he came by because he came in for a second opinion on a truck that another shop told him was just fine. And that's a, that is the truck that we found is, I mean, racket gear noise. I mean, it sound like the, the sound like the top of the engine was about to come apart. Uh, and so it, it really sounded bad. I mean, and, and I may be over exaggerating, but you don't want to have any gear train noise, period, at 400,000 miles or, or upper, 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 uh, upper gear train noise. You don't want to have any gear train, nothing going on, nothing sounding like it's going to break. Uh, and then another thing was the coolant bottle. The coolant bottle looked like it was mud. It looked muddy. You couldn't really see what color the coolant was. So, you know, I'm glad he came by. Um, you know, I, I really, I really appreciate the support. I'm, I'm able to help you guys. I mean, just, just that alone, you got to think about it. If he has, if he has any, if, if he has the uh, issue with an EGR cooler, or if he has to do something with the gear train, man, that is, that is super expensive on, on a, especially on an ISX 15. So if you are talking about an MX, make sure you're not, ha the same thing goes. Uh, if you're having issues with the after treatment, it's going to show up in, in the, uh, what, 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 when you're hooking up the computer, um, for MX, what I would do is run a regen, uh, I'm sorry, run a park regen. I'm going to check out the parameters. I'm going to look for back pressure readings. I'm going to make sure it's converting. 
Uh, if it's around the 300, 400,000 mile mark, we need to make sure a lot of the items are getting taken care of when it comes to maintenance because you don't want to be down on the side of the road or you don't want to be shut down, especially the DEF system. Make sure that the system is, the, the filters being replaced, uh, the valve adjustments are being done. Just all the maintenance needs to make sure it's getting done. So, uh, Jay, uh, we're doing just fine. Uh, very excited. We got the, the new, the new, uh, the new construction started. I want to do a share screen with you guys real quick. Check out this share screen. Look at the lot size. Look at the lot size of this uh, of this our new our new site, man. This is really nice. Uh, you know, this is probably four days of work right here. So I'm I'm very I'm very surprised how quick they they got this cleaned out. But you know, at the same time, these guys are doing uh, large projects. Uh, they're doing. Oh man, I lost chat. Did I lose chat? Where did chat go? Oh my goodness, I lost chat, guys. Give me a second. Let me see if I can get chat back going, guys. Uh, it looks like I lost chat. All right. Uh, wow. Guys, I lost chat. I should not have done that. Give me a second here. Let me see if I can figure chat out real quick, guys. Uh, here. I should not have done that here. Let me go here. Wow. Okay. There it goes. Here it comes back up. Sorry about that, guys. So I, I switched screens. I did a share screen and I lost chat and I was freaking out. Sorry about that. So Hazmat, thanks for the question. Hopefully that helps you on the MX series. Uh, we do uh, service Packard here. Packard is a really good engine. It's got a strong engine in it. Just as long as the, the maintenance is being kept up on the after treatment system as well. Uh, and check your oil changes as well. If you're if they're asked to, saying that they can go 50,000 miles, read the fine print. Make sure you're getting the right filters that they're asking for. Make sure you're using the right oil that meets the API qualification, which is usually about CK4 and above. Uh, and you want to make sure that you're, you're running a, an oil analysis if they are doing the 50,000 miles. Yeah, there are a lot of MXs out there. there there's a lot of T, a T6As out there. You know, I, I mentioned this in some of my other videos. What what we what I believe happened what I believe happened was is uh, back in 2018 whenever the the freight was just booming and this is back when the trade war first started kind of coming up into the media and what was going on is a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, retail people or a lot of the the buyers the customers started buying a lot of. Uh, just buying a lot of supplies because they were worried about it was going to get taxed. So boom, boom, boom. They're buying all the supplies. It throw it throws the, the cycle off. It really builds up a lot of freight into the market. And a lot of these big trucking companies thought this was going to carry on into 2019. And, you know, as I mentioned, I brought this up before. So 2019 comes around. It's, the market starts getting kind of slow. It starts getting really soft. And then, of course, COVID hits. And, and a lot of the trucking companies just couldn't handle it. As you can see, uh, I know there were some other items that caused uh, the other the other guys, the larger guys to go out of business. Um, and, you know, the one that was based out of Mexico and those guys out there just it just. Uh, so there is a lot of used trucks out there is basically what I'm trying to get to. And, and just taking your time to check all these items out that I'm mentioning about buying a used truck is going to save you a headache and some money. I know you, you if you see the truck and it's clean and it's all washed up. And it's all painted. Every all the suspension is painted. Everything looks new, which I'm not a fan of. I don't. If you're over 400,000 miles and they're painting over shocks, just be very cautious. I would be extremely cautious, honestly, because you don't paint shocks. You replace shocks. You don't paint them. Just because you're painting them doesn't mean that they're brand new. So, open up Saturdays and Sundays, Robert. You know what? I I'm I didn't know that you're kidding, but honestly, I've been looking at that. Um, I, I know my guys are working pretty hard already, five days a week. Uh, is what we're doing already. The Texas heat is is a is a is a beast, man. Texas heat is a beast. So having the guys in the shop for that long, working on a truck, you know, it's 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 you know, we want to be able to service you guys. But I've I've been a technician for a long time, so five days a week is pretty is is a, is very good work. But you know, being in the shop that long, you know, you your your quality can go down. So I may have to do maybe a swing shift. But I appreciate the feedback. You know, being open Saturdays is something we were used to do for a long time since I was open. Back in 2008, back in since 2008, I was six days a week. You know, we went to we went to five days just to kind of help the technicians out because of the workload and just being in the shop. It's very tough. You know, as you know, working on these trucks is not easy. It's very heavy, takes you time. And especially with this heat is very is very is very exhausting. And a lot of my technicians have family, but that does not you know, you guys have family, too. You guys are running. So I'm going to look into that. I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate that. That info. 
Uh, okay, Hazmat. Uh, are, ex are extra extra treatment fuel and oil worth the expenses? Um, I don't I don't understand the question, Hazmat. You're asking are extra after treatment fuel slash oil filters worth the expense? Uh, if you're asking about oil filters uh, so that you can run a longer oil change interval, I would go with what the what the recommendation would be for your particular uh, model. Uh, and, and make sure to read that fine print. Like as I mentioned, make sure you're using the oils they're recommending. And if you're doing that 50,000 miles, make sure you're doing a, a, uh, an oil analysis. Don't, don't just run 50,000 miles, 30,000 miles on oil change without an oil analysis. You want to know what's going on with that oil. Just like we, you know, just same things like checking on the blood, you know. Yes. Help guys buy a good truck. Yes, sir. 404 trucking. I appreciate that comment. Andrew, how much power does a Detroit 60 series push out? It just depends. Uh, you can look up the power output on your 60 series, whether it's a 12.7 or 14 liter. And if you're, if you don't feel like that power is there, there are going to be power settings in the ECM. If the truck was coming from a fleet, they could be putting it on the low power. There's different options. When the computer started developing, uh, um, technology started to develop more, they were giving more options on how to set your power up. So just if, if you have low power and it seems like you need to go ahead and do a uh, do that, then then I would go ahead and recommend that uh, get that get that uh, get that checked out. If you're showing like 500 horsepower and you're not you don't feel like you're making that. Make sure that the power setting is there. It could be a 500 power, 500 horsepower, but it's set at like 450. So check that out. Juan, do you recommend dyno tests on buying a used truck from a dealer? Dyno tests are good. They're just time consuming. So you just if dyno tests are good, I, I the reason why I don't recommend them, and I, it's not that I don't recommend them. It's just I know how much time it takes to take it to uh, a place that has a dyno machine. One day we're gonna get a dyno machine. Uh, I would like to do dynos on them, uh, but yes, if you can do a dyno just to make sure they're gonna be putting that truck under a load, and you're gonna be able to see what type of horsepower is pushing. So if it's under a loaded condition and it gets a check engine light, that's gonna be an indication whether or not you want to buy that truck. So yeah, if you can put it in the time, and you and you want and you could put it in the uh, afford it, go ahead and do it. It's almost like buying a house, you know. When you buy a house, you do an inspection report or, you know, you, you buy, you hire an inspector, you hire different people to check out this house before you buy it. And, and it's the same as buying a truck. You know, sometimes these, when these trucks were brand new, they were used to cost as much as a house. But, you know, of course, the, the market has brought the truck value down a lot. So it's not, you know, now that now it's the opposite. The house, the houses are, are, are really, are really high. So I appreciate that question, guys. Uh, we're going to keep on moving along with the questions. Colin, I appreciate that. I uh, appreciate that comment. Uh, Robert, not sure who you're calling out there, but thanks for the comment here. Uh, do you guys do DPF cleaning? Yes, sir, we do. Uh, we do BD DPF service. We do uh, uh, DEF service. We do EGR cleaning service. We do all, everything that needs to get done for an after treatment system. We are the guys to look for. A lot of guys that come from all over the country, you'd be surprised on – I'm surprised on what I hear from dealer services, what they get done at a dealer. I got a guy that got a whole one box replaced at a dealer and it was only and, and, he, and, his, and his problem came back. And I did a video on NOx. Uh, it was NOx conversion efficiency low. That was a video that we do uh, for those particular trucks and there's gonna be for a lot of trucks that have that particular fault, which is low NOx conversion. Basically, you're not getting all your NOx, which is uh, uh, not being converted into one box. It's not being uh, uh, eliminated, and that's why you're going to get that reading. So I'm going to paste this video to to the comment section. It's not going to be on the chat. It's going to be on the comment section. I can put it on the chat as well. Here it goes on the chat as well. Here it goes. Boom. So check out that video. Uh, make sure that that's getting checked out. Uh, yes, we can do cleaning. Come on by. Uh, Robert, Adam, uh, are you a partner or are you the owner? You know, Robert, I, I am the owner. I am the owner. Uh, I started in 2008. Now, I do feel like my, um, our, my team are my partner. I feel like without them, we cannot get what we get done. So I don't want to be like, hey, this is all mine. Uh, I, I could not have got here without the guys that are on my team. Uh, I, I am a sole owner, but without these guys, I would not have gotten where we're at now. Um, you know, we're getting a lot of work in the shop. Uh, they, 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 they do, they work hard to push the work out of here. They're, they're, we're in the heat all day. Uh, you know, I do my best to try to make it a comfortable environment for them, you know, especially with the pandemic that's going on. 
you know but uh no yeah i am i am so owner yes but by by myself uh i could not have got, gotten this done uh trey i appreciate that question guys if you got uh that comment i'm sorry guys if any of this information has helped you hit me up on cash app uh, if you guys haven't heard of Cash App, go to your app store, download Cash App, and uh, you can link the Cash App to anything. Uh, you can do a bank card, uh, checking account, anything like that, and safely send us uh, to help support the channel. I just put the uh, I put my my Cash ID in the comment section. I'm also going to put it in the chat. So make sure to uh, hit us up. I appreciate that. I'll buy a coffee or a beer or even a Gatorade with this heat, man. It's very hot out here, so I appreciate that. Where are you guys located? We are located in Hutchins, which is just south of Dallas. We're in a Dallas area. In December, we're going to be moving to our new location, guys. So make sure that you uh, check out our videos on construction. We're going to be running some new videos. I got some uh, uh, some good media. We got some media in from the drone. This is what this was. Uh, this video here is about right here. It's really slick. Let me give you. I, I would like to give you a preview, but I don't want to lose chat again. So I'm going to stay on. I'm going to stay on here. Okay, so uh, that's where we're located. We're going to be moving to 4140, uh, 4140, uh, 4140 Langdon Road. Uh, this should be our new address. If not, I will update it. But this is what Google Maps is showing. If you want to check us out, this is where we're moving to. Uh, we're very, I'm very excited. Uh, it's getting close, man. It's, I mean, I mean, construction has started, but they, you know, how fast they're moving. I'm, I'm hoping that you know December comes before we know it. So. Uh, is doing an overhead every uh, every year or every 100k miles on a 60 series 14 liter excessive now you want to do the first set at 500k and then after that you can do them i want to say let me double check for you because um, 60 series is at a 14 liter uh let me see 14 liter valve adjustment you know i might have to get back to you on the on, because you do follow up adjustments i want to say uh let me double check here let me see here. Oh man, that's not the one I'm looking for. Here, let me check here. You know, I'm gonna have to get back to you. You, I want to say it is every hundred thousand, but that does sound kind of excessive. What I would do is after your 500k, check your fuel mileage and make sure your fuel mileage is staying consistent. Make sure you're staying up with your fuel filters. Now, every 500k is is, is basic. So if 100k seems too excessive for you and it doesn't seem like you're getting any kind of adjustments done at 100k, ask your mechanic. Hey, was it was were the adjustments off? If they're not off, then let's just not let's just wait to, to do those every 200 or maybe 500,000 miles after your initial 500. Especially if you start losing power and you notice a difference on what's going on. That's what I would suggest you do. Uh, and, I, and what I can do, Jay, I'll follow up with you as well. If you can shoot me your email, I'll follow up with you. And I can shoot you the maintenance intervals for the 60 series. If Detroit is calling out every every 100,000, you can get them checked out. If it looks like they need to be adjusted, go ahead and adjust them, especially your jig brakes. Jig brakes is what I see mostly get out of adjustment. Uh, and that's probably what they're calling for mostly is checking those jig brakes. So I appreciate that question, Jay. Uh, next question, Cash is King. Okay, so Cash said Cash is King earlier said he was getting like nine miles to the gallon, which is nuts. Okay, so he's running twenty two hundred pounds or twenty two thousand pounds, sixty three miles an hour. I'm I'm at a truck at the truck with fifty thousand miles. I'm averaging eight point four miles per gallon since I got the truck. Navtech cruise control. Okay, so that's I mean you're basically running half the weight. I mean, I, I, first of all, thank you for your input. I appreciate you sharing this information. This is this is for other drivers can see what you know what your truck is comparing to. Okay, so if you're getting six or seven thousand seven miles to the gallon, that's decent. Especially uh, he's getting he's getting eight miles to the gallon. Of course, that's really good. He's driving a uh, speed limit, sixty three miles an hour. I know that sometimes could be below the speed limit in some areas. But his his weight is is pretty light to be on on for to be a reefer the, the weight's pretty light, uh, but you know that's that's good. And now now once you find your baseline on your miles per gallon, if it's over what is what's good, you know six seven miles to the gallon, that's good. And, and if you start seeing that just kind of slowly deteriorate and and you're following a good maintenance schedule, then of course look into valve adjustments at 500k. You know look make sure you want to keep that baseline at a consistent consistent and that's going to be with all the platforms not just older platforms it's going to be with all trucks so cash is king i really appreciate that that comment i really appreciate that uh that input man uh okay so we've got the next question 
Uh, Can and Thought have a 2017 Freightliner. CSC is losing coolant. Been several times in this month, more than seven times in the shop. No one can find a problem. Okay, so he's saying he's got a coolant leak uh, on a 2017 Freightliner. He's been to a shop seven times and they can't find a problem. What I would recommend you do, if they can't find it, you know, make sure you're getting a shop that knows what they're doing. If they, if seven, you know, it's hard for me to believe that seven shops don't know what's going on. What I would recommend you do is get in a, a oil sample to see if that oil is going into your cooling system or into your oils. Uh, if it is, then that's going to be an internal leak. If it's not, then make sure it's not going into your after treatment system. That's where I would start. Uh, well, first, if you already had that many people look at it, first do the oil sample, see if it's internal. If it's not internal, then it may be going into the exhaust and being burnt. That's something that needs going to be to be checked, especially if it's a if it's a very very high rate of coolant being lost. You can cause a lot of buildup. You can damage a filter if it's going too much coolant. It's going into the filter, uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, okay, so the next question: My truck engine light stays on and says ACM fault, but no codes. Any idea what it could be? You know, if you're getting an ACM fault and you're not getting any codes, it could be that the ECM and the CPC is not communicating with the ACM. Uh, depending on what truck you have, I have seen ACM harnesses. You know, sometimes they put these ACMs on the one box itself, right behind a tire, and they're exposed to all the elements. So the harnesses are just getting blown all over the place and moved all over the place. And and over time, you can you can uh, you can lose communication to the ACM. So what I would suggest you do um, is go ahead and get that looked at by a shop. Get that code pulled up. Let's figure out what that code is. If that code is, in fact, an ACM not communicating with the ECM or the truck, then we need, you would need to troubleshoot the harness. I wouldn't say replace the harness and condemn the harness without troubleshooting it first because it could be a loose connection. could be something going with your battery connections. They're not getting enough power over to that. Uh, it could be corrosion in the connection, so get that checked out. So hopefully that helps you. GS, what's up? What's up? Hazmat, yes, sir. I, yeah, yep, I appreciate uh, appreciate that. Sorry, I lost my space here, my, my spot here. Um, okay, yeah, Trey, I got the I got the um, I got it back going. So I appreciate that. Um, I know you were concerned about the chat being lost too. Andrew, how much power does the Detroit 60 series punch out like? What is the max power? Usually about five, five fifty. This is with stock tunes. That's nothing that's going aftermarket tune. Uh, if you do any kind of aftermarket, just keep in mind that you're going to be risking all types of. Uh, you know, you could be risking your, some power issues. Anytime you push more power, more than what the what the whole unit is basically uh, built for, and we're talking about chassis and all that, you can you you can des definitely cause some damage. So. Uh, what I would do, if you want to see what your power settings are, you can have somebody with Triple D software hook up, and you can go into your power ratings, and that power rating is going to let you know what it is and what it's actually set at. And you're going to have, you could have more available power if you're looking for more power. So I appreciate that input. I appreciate that comment on chat right there, Andrew. GS, uh, that's why I prefer dealers for parts. Okay, that's uh, good. I'm glad you do. I'm glad you prefer dealers. I, I honestly, we use a lot of OEM parts. There's not a lot of aftermarket parts out there when it comes to engines. Okay, so if you're looking with chassis and stuff like that, we can we have a little bit more selection. But definitely go with OEM parts if you're going on the truck. There are some aftermarket rebuild kits that are really standing behind their product. They're giving really strong warranties. So those are items that you can keep in mind as well on using. Transport says, great info. I always put towards uh, this towards working on our own trucks. Help me out. Uh, help me out a lot. Saves money and sending them out to other shops. Yes, sir, Transport. I really appreciate I really appreciate the report, support, Transport. Um, thanks for joining us all the time, and I really appreciate your input. Uh, Juan, what's up, Tat? I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that shout-out. Shout-out over here in Dallas. Uh, what want to be a diesel mechanic love working on the trucks, but my dad wants me to take over the dispatch But I'm more interested in this after treatment and engine work, you know uh, That's what's gonna keep your trucks moving. I understand. I can understand how easy it would be getting tired of dispatch work uh, You know as I mentioned before I've had trucks in the past and I understand dealing with brokers and it, it's almost like politicians man, you know, they I don't know. I don't understand why they get to a point where they just lie and they just I, I you know, I don't want to talk bad about nobody. I'm just giving you my experience of of what do what dispatchers deal with. And, you know, when it comes to loads being delivered and I, I know drivers know what I'm talking about being pushed 
uh, just just for unrealistic times and 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 not being you know not being treated not being treated as you know basically they don't know it's kind of like someone just telling you what to do or you know how to do your job you know it's kind of tough so hazmat saying a bypass filter are you okay if you're talking about like a uh, fuel filter bypass kind of like what fast systems have those are good systems they they purge the air out of the system they they keep any time anything anything any items from happening but you want to make sure they're installed correctly uh you want to make sure you're not 90 in any of these these uh these aftermarket fuel filters that you're putting on these systems or even the oil 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 filter systems make sure you're not kinking the hose and if you are putting a a a secondary filter or a bypass filter in your oil system i would still recommend running an oil sample if you're going to be pushing uh, an oil analysis if you're going to be pushing at 30,000 30, 50,000 miles that's still a lot of miles to be pushing on the oil so keep in mind i mean that soot it can still be in that oil it's still going to be collected somewhere that soot's going into the exhaust it's going into the intake it's going out it's going out all over the place it's getting mixed in with the oil over time that soot's going to build up in the oil as well so if you're going to be running a bypass filter and you want to extend your oil changes i would still recommend you run an oil chain um uh, i'm sorry oil um uh, oil i'm sorry i was reading the next comment uh oil analysis so juan says tranny shifts all gears good though okay so if your your transmission is shifting you had a question about uh uh you 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 you're, you were grinding at a stop when you're coming to a stop and you hold that clutch down and you're trying to get it into the gear there's a clutch brake that goes behind the throwout bearing now if you're if you have there's, now you want to be careful when you're dealing with your clutches. Uh, make sure that you're, if you have a hydraulic system set up, foot pedal, you got an automatic self-adjusting clutch. If you don't, then you can run a manual adjusting clutch. If you have a manual adjusting clutch, check to make sure that your clutch is, be, is, is adjusted. If it, if it is adjusted, there's a test that we run where we put a filler gauge behind the, the stop brake and we have the driver push the clutch down and we're able to pull that filler gauge out. We know that we're not getting enough uh, enough pressure up against that stop brake to stop that shaft from spinning so that you can go in gear at stop so check your trans check your clutch your stop brake make sure all that's functioning correctly i would check it to an experienced shop to, that knows how to work on dry trains uh to be able to check that out for you because you don't you don't want to uh you know hey oh your transmission is bad and then of course just spend all this type of money so hopefully that helps juan i appreciate that question andrew thanks for checking out my video on that uh, motorhome yes sir i appreciate that yep uh appreciate that comment gs uh will be getting new trucks for 100k at the rate okay we'll be getting new trucks for 100k at this at this rate uh what do you mean i'm i'm curious i'm curious to know let me go back to you uh Go back to your question i'm curious to know what you mean by that uh, give me some more details on that let me see here let me go down to gs's comments so i can kind of get a more understanding of what he's he's telling me here how to get uh literature for engines rebuild torque specs and overhauls uh if you're gonna get any kind of any kind of literature you go through the dealer uh i mean go through the manufacturer i mean look for your channels of manufacturers and you can find your literature through there it's not going to be cheap you're going to have to pay for it but you know information is is not cheap and information is uh, real accurate information is not going to be uh you're not going to be able to find free and you're not going to be able to find it free but uh and i'm not saying you're looking for free stuff but i'm just saying it's not cheap you know we hold subscriptions for all engines and that's going to be renewed every year so keep that in mind guys i've been going on for an hour now and i'm excited about uh the new build that we got going on with our new project if you guys uh have not uh i know you a lot of you guys have already subscribed to us we're looking for more subscribers so if you know anybody that owns a truck that this information can help them out uh you know make sure to uh, share us share share my channel to them help support the channel I got merch still on their way uh, coming to you guys. So I appreciate your patience and I appreciate all the support. Uh, got a question here. How reliable is a DT12 or a DT12 transmission and can I get it locked into performance mode? Uh, you know, D DT12 transmissions are pretty strong, man. I haven't had an issue with them. Uh, most, I take that back. Most issues that I see is going to be clutches just like any other, any other systems air systems they get clogged up or they malfunction actuators malfunction so i mean just basically the same type of problems you're going to have with a regular transmission you're going to have with a d12 
Uh, I like the D12. I like the design. You know, it's like 300 pounds less than uh, an actual uh, um, uh, manual speed transmission. So that's a lot of weight you're shedding off there. Uh, keep up with your maintenance schedule. If you do have a D12, make sure that you're looking at your maintenance intervals and you're following the maintenance intervals and, and taking care of your air system, like your dryers, making sure your dryers take, uh, uh, make sure your dryers stay in service because those those depend a lot on the air. So if you don't have a good solid clean air system, you can have issues with your with your D12. So guys, I appreciate all the support. Um, I'm very excited about our new building going up. Uh, guys, let me know what you think about that. I appreciate all your comments. I'm trying to catch up to everybody here. So, how much money does your company make? I appreciate that question. You know, that's uh, it. Just you know, it depends. You know, especially with this year, it's been kind of fluctuating. So, I appreciate that question. Uh, that's awesome, Adam. Yes, sir, Robert. I appreciate that. Uh, Trucker J702. Hi, I just got on. What is your thought on using synthetic oil in a D? Okay. So if you're using the synthetic oil on a DD15, his question is, what what do I think about using synthetic oil on a DD15? Now, what I what I want to mention about running high intervals, you know, and I'm pretty sure that's probably what you're going to be doing. If you're going to be running uh, 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 synthetic oil, I'm pretty sure you're going to go over over the or whatever whatever the, you're you're pushing. What I would say is get an oil analysis done. If you're trying to do 30,000 miles, 50,000 miles on your oil chains on a synthetic oil, make sure you're following the intervals and the way the way that they're describing in the fine print. I, I, as I mentioned before, make sure that you're that you're that you're that you're following the the recommended oil that they're saying, following the recommended uh, fuel filters, oil filters, and also doing an oil analysis. Uh, they're not they're not going to run that on there without an oil analysis. I would definitely run an oil analysis, even if you're running synthetic oil. If you're idling, that soot is going to have to go somewhere, and it does make its way to the oil. So if you're not changing your fuel oil filters with the synthetic oil, just make sure you're following directions when you're running that type of uh, synthetic oil. That's what I think about that. Colin Transfer, I'm here in Fort Worth. I'll check you out. Okay, come check me out, guys. Uh, guys, If you, it, we get a lot of guys from all over the country, man. So we got guys, like I mentioned, from West Coast, East Coast, up in the north, down from the south. Uh, we appreciate all the support. We know it's hard to find a good solid shop that's going to treat you right. Uh, this is why we he we're here. We're making these videos. I'm making these videos. I'm letting you know. I'm sharing my information. I'm sharing you that my experience. I know that you can't always trust a dealer. We get a lot of, of, of uh, repairs come in that that come after the dealer, you know, seven eight thousand dollar repair, and they're, and they're still having the same problem. So. Uh, you know, if you if you can make it to my shop and you have service that needs to get done, we're here to help. Uh, if you're not familiar with what's going on, watch the announcement video. Okay, so Trey saying uh, I, I'm mentioning my, our new construction. I'm going to share uh, the the video that we did. It's an announcement video. I'm going to share it in the comments, guys. Check that video out if you don't know what's going on. That's basically where we started and where we're going. We have got a new building going up here in the Dallas area. It's been a very tough project. Uh, you know, it's just a lot of backlash. Uh, I'm sorry, not backlash. Well, whatever the case may be, it's, it wasn't easy. You know, there was a lot of stuff to, to get this done. And uh, we're very excited about it, very proud about it. So, okay, GS, how do you get literature? Okay, I'm sorry, I answered that question already. Thunder, half of this truck drivers are, okay. No, I wouldn't say that, man. I, I would, uh, yeah, that's not, that's kind of rude, man. So, uh, I'm in, hey, sir, I have a, two, uh, a T600 2007 ISX issues, bad MPGs. Okay, so if you have, what's your mileage right now? Uh, Ahmed says he's having, uh, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right, but he's saying that he has an ISX, a 2007 ISX. That's an older model ISX. Um, you know, there could be multiple items that, are, that could be going on with that. I would check DTCs, see what your DTCs are. Uh, make sure you had your oil change, uh, your good fresh f fuel filters. Uh, make sure you don't have old fuel filters there because if you have old fuel filters, you could be having issues with power. Uh, you know, as I mentioned on a video that I saw earlier about, um, you know, I, I've seen, I've seen uh, fuel filters with very, very high mileage on them, very, very high mileage. And if you're gonna be running high mileage on your fuel filters, you're definitely gonna have power problems. Uh, and if you haven't had your valves just adjusted, that's something else you want to look into. So hopefully that helps. If you want to email us, email us. We definitely we can make in an appointment and check that out for you. 
what is your hourly rate? Most of our jobs are gonna be kind of a flat rate on a particular job, say a vow adjustment is this much, after treatment service is this much. So that's basically how we price that. If you want a specific price on a job, you can email us at, email us at info at tatexpress.com. That's, you can send all your inquiries there. Make sure to include your VIN number and uh, just a, a detailed explanation on, on what type of service you're looking for and why. That way I can better assist you on, on, on the pricing for there. So I appreciate that question there, Gilbert. Uh, 187 diesel, my 2014 D13 has 723,000 miles. Is it okay to do a rod and main bearing? Now, are you having low oil pressure? You know, because the engines are rated for one point, I want to say 1.2, 1.3 miles. So if you're having low oil pressure, if you've had a failed oil pump, if you had, you know, excessive pressure in your oil, oil system, if you don't know, if the if the uh how the maintenance was you know what you can do is check them out you know before replacing them if you're if you're going to get down into the system like that you can check them to see if they're scarred uh run, run an oil analysis to see if you see any metal in your oil uh but you know i would i wouldn't just do it just to do it i would try to see what's going on you know because it's a lot of work and if you if you don't use the right shop they can actually cause more damage than good you know i've seen engines get opened up at a dirty shop and try to do mains and you know the mains get all scratched up and it just makes a mess so you know just keep in mind what i just mentioned on that i appreciate that that question there at 187 diesel uh gil what you got here would bad engine mounts cause jerking on the transmission eaton auto volvo changed the clutch five months ago now they want to charge again for the you know honestly they why didn't they look at the mounts before if you have high mileage if you have over a million miles and you're changing out a clutch if you have even five six hundred thousand miles over over uh five hundred thousand k and you're getting a clutch replaced why aren't they checking that that needs to be checked whenever you're this is what, what i hold my guys here at the shop accountable for a lot of stuff so when we do inspections we're looking at everything you know if, if we're having a complaint and this is what i mean that nothing is just resting on one technician if somebody comes in with a complaint about a jerking you know when they're under loads that's something we're looking for uh, on the suspension side and yeah definitely uh if you got high mileage uh in your 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 motor mounts you know loose motor mounts wore out motor mounts is going to cause all types of noise and damage and, and moving around Got a new subscriber there. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, thanks for that question, Big Gil. Hopefully that answered. Uh, if you got some more to add on to that, make sure to add on to that there. Gilbert, what's up? Are fuel and oil additives good? I use, okay, you know, Hot Shot, I, don't, I wouldn't recommend any of that stuff, man. Uh, I've, I've had bad experiences with that where, as I mentioned before, if you're using you know these newer there's newer these newer newer trucks are running smart injectors the the clearance on them are like so small you got to look at them with a microscope if you've ever pulled a, a smart injector out whether on a d13 or or a dd15 and or even a, a isx isx15 you look at the tip you can't even see the spray nozzle you can't even see the hole that the spray nozzle comes out of it's so tiny you can't see it with the naked eye so what concerns me with these additives is they're going to be breaking up some items that could be built up in your fuel system whether it's in the tanks fuel lines pumps whatever it can that stuff's going to end up going into the system and could cause problems so keep that in mind i would definitely what i would do to avoid uh any problems in which are dirty fuel make sure you're fueling in good areas uh, and and keep up with your fuel fuel uh, fuel filter changes. It, you may have to change your fuel filters more frequent than than what the intervals are called for. So I know I preach all the time about the intervals, about keep up with your with your maintenance schedule and your use your intervals. And and I do this because it's a baseline. I want this something. It's a baseline that I want you guys to follow. Now, if you can, if you start to notice power losses, it's in some cases you might have to replace those fuel filters at early at, at early. So keep that in mind uh is that red bull and the yeti no it isn't trey it's water texas is super hot and uh and and today is one is was really one of the hot days so hey martin how you doing sir appreciate the uh shout out uh thanks chat thanks for guys for all the uh all the support all the questions here transport has another uh something else he wants to add here diesel laptops is having in the class course on treatment okay you think okay uh california about doing it okay five hundred dollars okay what you know honestly transport I, i'm glad that you brought this up transport is looking for from classes and he's looking for after treatment classes honestly transport i'm looking to maybe start a series 
uh, training series uh, and it would be a subscriber based series and it would be online classes something that like you can actually go through and I, I would like to offer you guys some more support as well because I know this is not easy and 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 I don't like seeing all the customers all the viewers out there that are going to these shops and having these bad experience because lack of training now the literature is out there I'm not sure why a lot of these shops aren't going above and beyond to 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 get trained up on this and understand these systems because these systems aren't going anywhere and they've been here for a while and understanding them and being able to troubleshoot them correctly is very important so you know i couldn't i couldn't give you an i couldn't give you a um, an answer on that transport those guys call me a lot they always want me to uh you know join them uh i, I don't i don't use them um just because just you know i, I use dealer dealer software dealer uh, manuals on everything that we worked on I've had tried to use bundle packages like that before when I first started and you know the functionality is would be limited when it comes to dealing with the Pacific engine if you're dealing with the Cummins Insight would be more more functional for you you can do a lot more functionalities with it uh, if you're dealing with Volvo then then uh, definitely uh, 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 power service literature is going to be I'm sorry if you're dealing with Volvo you're going to be doing a power tech tool that's going to be uh, definitely what you're going to need if you're working on Volvo, especially if you're running regions and anything like that. On my way to your shop, sir, I believe you're coming out of El Paso. I seen you talking about that yesterday. I'm getting up to Odessa with check engine lights on. I think I'm derated. If I'm hoping you can make it. I remember you I have a viewer said he's on his way. He's driven uh, across country before with this light on. This is the only reason why I, I kind of said, hey, come on by. If you've already driven a long time and it's still make it and it's gone away and it's come back, most of the time it's it's either an issue with after treatment problems. Um, um, I'm hoping you can make it. Give us a shout if you got any questions on the way out here. I appreciate the support, guys. Uh, let me see here on my way. I like the cap. I'm gonna get some on. I'm gonna get some guys some caps out for you guys uh, on the merch store. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that is. Open them blinds in the back. I want to see what the view you got. The blinds in the back is just you're just gonna see the hotel next to us. There's really not a big view uh, in, in this area. We're, we're just basically the hotels right next to us. That's the only thing we got. So transport, sorry to let you down on that view. Hopefully we had it like a, a better view in the back of us. But we're gonna be trying to make some more background. I'm gonna be building a, a different style studio when we get to the new shop, guys. I'm gonna give you some more eye candy to look at. Uh, so I appreciate that. We finally got chat working, so that's pretty exciting. I want to get the colors down right. The colors seem kind of bland, so I want to. I would like to see how. I would like them to come up how the, we see them here, cause transport. I can see your logo, Robert. I can see your logo or your profile pic. So I would like. I wish that was would pop up, so that would be more more unique. Um, so Martin, I hope you make it by GS. Congrats on my new shop. I appreciate that. Uh, we're very happy of that. Uh, what's everyone think about the chat box? I think it's pretty cool. It is the comment from Trey guys This is the chat box. We got now we got the chat box finally working. Uh, I like it. I like it. Thanks. Thanks Trey Felicidades y tu nuevo año. Thank you. Thank you. Taller nuevo. I uh, appreciate that Jose Gracias. Muchas gracias. Estamos bien felices que vamos a agarrar un taller nuevo uh, uh, Bienvenidos a todos uh, Martin, how you doing? Thank you, sir. Uh, Ahmed says his truck is at, uh, and I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. It's uh, Ahmed. Uh, One million miles is says he's at, and that was on a comment he made. Uh, bad MPGs, a million miles. There could be quite a quite a few things that could go wrong with that. I would probably start with the, if it's an ISX. Uh, would start with a balance test. Uh, we start with a compression test, just kind of checking the condition of the engine and figure out what's going on. Make sure you don't have any fuel pressure or fuel related issues, boost pressure. Uh, I, I will have merch going for sale transport. I'm sorry, we are we do have somebody that we're using now. Uh, so I'm trying to get the hats the way that we want that I have them because these are made here locally. We're trying to get somebody to help us get these hats going, uh, but we don't want to lose the quality. Okay, so no pressure issue. Uh, run strong. 187. Okay, 187. Let me go back to your question. No pressure issues. Running strong. Then I wouldn't do the mains, man. Run an oil analysis. See what the oil analysis runs, and and make sure you're running a good a good maintenance on that. A good. When I mean maintenance, if your oil pressure, make sure your uh, your your oil oil uh, intervals are good. That's a D13. So make keep your idling down. 
Uh, and if you're at 500, 700K, make sure you had the filter clean already, valve adjustments, and have a lot of the after treatment stuff cleaned out, like your intake pressure sensor, DEF pressure sensor, uh, uh, I'm sorry, your DEF filter, uh, your uh, differential pressure sensor on the, on the uh, DPF system, get all that cleaned out. That's going to help you uh, uh, keep uh, avoid any downtime. Is it okay to dip the NOx sensor and Lucas injector cleaner and spray the carb cleaner? Uh, you know, if it's clogged up, if you're having issues with NOx sensors, uh, then I, I honestly I would not put any kind of uh, carb uh, car, carburetor cleaner. If you put any stuff that any oils or anything like that, you can cause that sensor to run at a hotter temperature and you can damage it. If you are having buildup on your on your on your NOx sensors, then I would just kind of clean them off. Uh, make sure you're, you're if you're if you're having issues with nox sensors make sure you're getting checked out at a shop that knows what they're doing disable a def system run a regen check for nox drifting don't just change the nox sensor if you're having uh nox cover conversion efficiency falls that's not a reason to change that you want to make sure to disable the def system run a run a park regen check the check the uh, differences on your nox sensors and see if they're drifted apart they need to be within 50 ppm so keep that in mind uh, thanks for that question. Uh, Pat, uh, buy the OTR performance reset tool. Okay, so I'm glad I had a viewer here that just he's suggesting that you buy a reset tool from OTR. I'm glad you mentioned this. Now, one thing that I noticed with Detroit, Volvo, especially Volvo, is when you when we get a truck in with high soot levels, they're putting limits on what the soot level needs to be at. If you're exceeding like 160% of your soot level, that filter needs to be replaced. If you're if you're having high back pressure, if you're having your your brakes, that means if your if your differential pressure is very high, it, so it means if you're trying to run a regen, your pressure is high, uh, you don't want to just clear the codes and run a reset, run a regen. So that concerns me with OTR's performance reset tool because if you have excessive soot buildup in your after treatment system and all you're doing is just disabling the safeguards and running a regen. You can definitely cause damage. So I would definitely get the truck looked at if you haven't checked engine lights. These OTRs, they may work in some cases, but in, in some cases you could be causing them some damage because you need to get the filter looked at at a certain uh, mile interval. And if you're not getting it looked at, you're not getting it cleaned, and you're just resetting it and, and, and moving forward, then definitely you can cause some excessive back pressure. You can have issues with your turbo. You can have issues with, with just a lot of performance problems. So hey how you doing thunder so i'm about to guys i'm about to try to catch up with everybody i'm getting a little tired uh we've got about an hour straight gs says i got insight how to extract the literature okay so insight doesn't have literature insight is just the software you have to get a subscription to have uh access to cummins literature so um you'd have to look into that that's going to cost another uh that's going to cost another another uh, per, uh, uh, subscription a month to have access to and and you're gonna have to pay more to be able to use excessive uh or multiple vin numbers you, you if you buy the basic license that come with uh insight you should be able to have access to literature online already and you're gonna have to just bump up your license if you want to add multiple multiple vin numbers trey it, uh if this info helps you out be sure to leave tat express okay i appreciate you i'm glad you brought that up trey Guys, if you can't do Cash App, as I mentioned to you before, Cash App is going to your Cash App store to support the channel. Uh, money sign TAT Expressing, uh, you know, uh, support the channel. If you can't do that, leave us a Google review. Leave us a Facebook review. Any of those reviews will help us. Uh, you know, don't fabricate a story. If it's something that's helped you, I want to hear it. Leave it, leave us in the, leave it in the comments. Uh, I would appreciate a review if you guys uh, would help us out. Go to Cummins Quick Serve GS. Yep, that's where it's at. Uh, Martin, uh, well, Gil, thanks for the input. Martin, thank you, sir. I will see you tomorrow. Hopefully, you make it in. If you got any questions, make sure to shout out to us. I'll be more than happy to help you. Uh, count me, count me in on that. Yes, sir. Transport GS. Go to Google and search Cummins Quick Serve. There you go, right there. That's where you find it. Uh, thanks for the input there, uh, Transport. Uh, I'm gonna bring my truck into you guys. What is the price range for a DPF cleaning and a full point truck inspection? Okay, so the truck inspection is gonna be free. That's that's basically what we do. Uh, uh, it's a digital inspection. If you have a need a federal inspection, that's gonna be a charge, but a free digital inspection 
looking over your entire truck, letting you know what we find. Uh, if you want to email us, I got the info at tatexpressing.com. Email me, email me your VIN number, and I'll give you exact price on what a DPF cleaning would cost. Uh, what about for Detroit? Detroit would be PSL. PSL is another license you would have to buy if you want access to literature. Uh, GS, Detroit, not too sure, but go to the dealer, buy books. Um, he's, he's okay. So GS, uh, transport, you guys can go to PSL. PSL is going to be able to uh, sell you a, a subscription as well. It's going to be, I want to say about $700 a month. I'm sorry, $700 a year for access to, uh, access to that. So check that out. Great info. Yes, sir. Uh, Rios, I appreciate the comment there. Just pressure wash it. Okay. GS, appreciate that. Uh, GS. Or go to Google and type Detroit DD15 manual. There you go. GS, quick serve, free, five zero numbers. Thanks for the input there. Uh, thanks for sharing that transport, 10 4, sir. Uh, GS, don't pressure wash it. You can end up damaging filters. You can damage electrical parts as well. So be careful when you pressure when you pressure test this uh, actual engine. Guys, I'm going to wrap it up. I appreciate you guys joining me today. We're excited about the construction. We're excited about sharing this journey with you guys. Thank you for all the support. Make sure to hit us up this week if you got any questions about your truck, 972-225-3017. You can hit us up during with the weekday, Monday through Friday, 8 to 8 to 6 p.m. You can email us, as I mentioned, info at TAT Express Inc. You can hit us up on Facebook. You can hit us up here on YouTube. Uh, send us all your questions. I'm sorry it's, if it does take a little bit to get to you. I'm working on getting you back. I'm caught up right now with all the questions. So if you got any new questions, make sure to shout out to us. Uh, guys, make sure to uh, keep an eye on uh, who you're using to service your truck. If you got any questions, if you got any concerns on what they're recommending you, uh, reach out to us. I can help you out. So, guys, until next time, guys, be safe. We got more content coming out on the construction. We got D13 Volvo video coming out. Thank you guys for all the support. Until next time, I'll see you guys. Catch me howling at the moon